Stay with us. News 10 is next. From the Sierra to the Pacific. Live from California's capital. This is News 10. Reported by Dick Cable and Susan Blake. Good evening. Dick Cable has the night off. I'm George Warren. Residents in the mountain community of Woodfords are picking up the pieces this evening. Well, George, many of them face a struggle to rebuild their homes and businesses following a devastating fire that burned for five days. Fortunately, though, help is on the way. Today, the state declared Alpine County a state of emergency. Meantime, adding up the losses remains the prime activity in Woodfords. For many of us, the big challenge is finding a way to stay reasonably cool. Our Tom Marshall joins us live now with some people who've found a way to beat the heat. Tom, what is the temperature? Tom, is that you, Tom? It's me. <laughs> What's the uh, we temperature? Had a, we had a high today officially, George, of 107 degrees. It's down to a reasonable 106 right now. The unfortunate part is there's not a breath of wind stirring out here. This is what I guess have been come called as the dog days of August. For some, that's a lot of drudgery, but for others, it's a chance to play. If you're a kid, the heat wave is just a vague concept. Go jump in the river became a sane dare. Well, to most people. You're not going to hit. You're not going to go. 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 He is. I'm not. Just go. With heat rippling up from the pavement, most adults would have gladly traded places with the kids. 104 is too hot for some people to even enjoy golf. For them, getting as naked as legally allowed seemed to be the only answer. <laughs> Down, boy. Wonder if that kid ever jumped yet. No, just jump out. Just jump out. I did it. Hey, shut up. Hard. I'm going to do it. Air conditioner repair people weren't afraid of a little extra heat and cash. For SMUD, it's been a day of near-record power usage. We have 42,000 residential customers who have volunteered for us to cycle their air conditioners on hot afternoons. We turn them off for about 10 minutes every half an hour, and that can drop the peak demand by as much as 42 megawatts. Meanwhile, back at the old swimming hole... <laughs> <laughs> Finally uh, figured out how to have it done. It's the first time for everything. I think that's about the only way we're all going to be able to cool off at all, uh, George. Uh, right now it's 106 here at McKinley Park. 106. Okay, I think you've been out in the heat too long, Tom. <laughs> Come on back inside. Okay. Later on News 10, Harry Stockman tells us how long this hot spell might last. And in HealthCast, we'll tell you why the heat wave could be hazardous to your health. A Folsom family driving through Oak Park late Saturday night was shot at by a sniper. Little four-year-old Brooke Hunt, in fact, was taken to the Sutter General Hospital with a fractured skull. Her mother was cut with flying glass. Our Lim Gormley reports today David Hunt tries to make sense out of the shooting. Right the sniper's bullet came in through David Hunt's rear window, then went out through the front passenger window, passing within inches of his wife and children. Right now, the only way that prison officials know if an inmate has AIDS is if he requests to be tested. But a bill before the legislature calls for mandatory testing of all inmates, and that issue will be coming up tomorrow as these hearings continue. Gail Westrup, News 10 at the Capitol. The Mona County Jail in Bridgeport has hit the big time. Well, at least if its prisoners list is any measure, actor Sean Penn noted for his temper, his films, and his pop singing wife, Madonna, is now serving 60 days in that tiny jail. Our Pat Davis reports on Bridgeport's latest tourist attraction. In the tiny mountain town of Bridgeport, residents say there are no secrets, at least not for long. That's why two days after Sean Penn checked into this tiny jail, vacationers were coming by to check out the latest tourist attraction. To see him, see the jail, see maybe Madonna pop in. Who knows? Sean Penn, he's so famous and everything. It's just amazing he's here. But most walked away disappointed. Now that people know where he is, Penn won't come out. And jail officials are making sure nobody gets in, not even a camera lens. Yet most of the people who live here couldn't care less. To them, Sean Penn is nobody. I've never heard of him. Who's Sean Penn? I don't know. And those who have heard of the fiery actor whose biggest claim to fame may be his well-known wife, Madonna, Penn's arrival is... <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. You're not a fan of his. Nah. Most of the people here are transplants from Hollywood. They're from Southern California. They don't give a damn about any of the actors. <laughs> Put it bluntly. 
I'd rather see his wife, yeah. <laughs> Madonna, who is rumored to be on the outs with Penn, hasn't shown up yet. And no one but Penn knows whether she will. Not surprisingly, Sean Penn is refusing to be interviewed. But what is surprising to some is that so far, he isn't causing any problems. In fact, he's being described by jail employees as cooperative, polite, even humble. The offices, when they were booking him, they said that um, they were very impressed by his actions and they expected to find somebody entirely different. Jail officials say if Penn's a model prisoner, he could get time off for good behavior and would serve only about half of his 60-day sentence. But as long as he's here, jail officials say he'll be treated like any other inmate, not a celebrity. In Bridgeport, Pat Davis, News 10. Now, Sean Penn was not simply invited to spend 60 days in the Mono County Jail. He wanted to avoid the crowded and violent Los Angeles County Jail, so he's paying $40 a day to Mono County to stay in their 16-prisoner jail. Still ahead on News 10 and 5. Come Friday, will the Sacramento Union arrive on your doorstep? We'll find out about a possible strike at the newspaper. After 12 weeks of public testimony, the Iran-Contra hearings finally came to an end today. We'll have a wrap-up of today's closing session. Plus, remember the Edsel? At least some collectors do, and they've gathered for a convention celebrating the infamous car. Oh, your step is snappy. When you own an Edsel... All that and more as News 10 continues. KXTV Channel 10 in the spirit of California. KXTV wants you to know that the San Joaquin County Women's Center offers sexual assault intervention training classes beginning August 11th. For details, call the center today. The oldest newspaper in the West might soon have the emptiest newsroom. Members of the Newspaper Guild have authorized a strike against the Sacramento Union. As Mark Hedlund reports, the news comes at a time when the paper is already struggling to survive. For a century and a half, the presses have run every day. The Sacramento Union boasts a colorful history. Its alumni of reporters include Bret Hart and Mark Twain. They never went on strike. Strike! 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 But strike is what Twain and Hart's modern-day counterparts are contemplating. They say a 15% pay cut a year ago makes it impossible to continue. 18% of our membership has had to remortgage their home. One is in, in jeopardy of losing their home. Uh, there's 18% have had to sell parts of collections, including silverware, in order to make ends meet. Enough is enough. Guild members say they'll negotiate with newspaper management one more time. If the current offer of a 3% raise doesn't go up, the 200-member union says it'll walk out. As far as anybody can remember, in the 150-year history of the Sacramento Union, there has never been a strike. And the workers say if they do walk out, the Sacramento Union will be hard-pressed to put newspapers on the rack. No question the strike would shut the paper down. Regardless of how many walk out, we will continue to publish. The paper's general manager, Jack Bates, claims most workers are happy at the union, that working conditions are fine. Our employment levels have remained the same. We have no more people leaving now than we ever had. Uh, I think uh, privately, if you ask the people, they'd say they're very happy working at the Sacramento Union. It's a good place to work. But many reporters are already leaving. Kim Huggett, a seven-year veteran police reporter at the Union, is quitting for a job at a community college. He wanted to stay. I didn't want to leave the Sacramento Union, but I couldn't afford to stay. And uh, that's, that's the situation I'm at now. And, my, and I've known people that have had to sell, sell things in order to make ends meet. I, I doubt that I could qualify for the loan of my house based on what I'm making now. If a strike happens, it doesn't mean certain death for the newspaper. But circulation has dropped. The company admits being in financial trouble. A massive strike could leave the capital city perilously close to becoming a one newspaper town. In Sacramento, Mark Hedlund, News 10. At Dairy Queen, an American original. You're watching News 10 with Dick Cable and Susan Blake on KXTV Channel 10. Once again, Dick Cable's off. I'm George Warren sitting in. And Sacramento's been hit with another drug-related murder. Early this morning, a 31-year-old man was shot to death in Oak Park. Police say people there were having a crack cocaine party. As Mark Hedlund reports, the house is known to neighbors as a center for drug trafficking. It's a deserted-looking house on 4th Avenue with makeshift window coverings and little furniture. 
Early this morning, it was the scene of a murder. 31-year-old Lawrence Craig was found shot to death in a back bedroom. Neighbors say a group of men chased him into the house. During the day, a lot of people were curious about what had happened, many rushing right inside as they pulled up. The fact that a murder occurred at this house has really not come as a shock to many of the people who live around here. They say for months, the activity around here has been a problem. As far as they're concerned, there's no question that this is a crack house. This year, 18,000 American adults and children will die from a disease called leukemia. Although the figures are startling, they mean even more when you realize leukemia affects people in your hometown. Many leukemia patients are cured, but money for research into this killer is still needed. On August 8th at 3 p.m., join me, George Warren. And me, Gail Westrup, as Channel 10 broadcasts a national televent, Six Hours for Life. It's a Leukemia Society benefit in the spirit of California. American Vision World View To understand the nation and know the world. That is the promise of CBS News. Time now for the extended forecast. Are we sure we want to hear this? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you will want to hear this, George. I do expect that we'll get a break in the heat wave. First of all, let's see how hot it did get today. 104 at Executive Airport. We mentioned the 107 downtown. 102 in Stockton and Modesto. 105 in Bakersfield. 110 at Needles. Well, we'll be back here at 11 o'clock with more news. We'll tell you about an important test of the space shuttle today. And we'll have a story for you that may make you do a double take. Why is the Pope walking around blackjack tables in a Nevada casino? The full explanation tonight at 11. We'll want a full explanation, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Do you remember the Edsel? Well, we're going to tell you about some people who certainly haven't forgotten. And it is time for their annual convention. We're going to take you there when we come back. Craig Worth for CBS News, Anaheim, California. The Ford Motor Company built it so you know it's good. The commercials are what's best about all that. Kind of like falling in love. <laughs> Real close to it, I would imagine. <laughs> That's a report. CBS TV News coming up next. And we'll be back at 11.